minus four, three, two, one, zero. Welcome to the Intergalactic Boom Box, the podcast that is enhanced with 2.0 features like chapters, images, value for value. If your podcast app doesn't have these features, get a better one. Newpodcastapps.com. And speaking of value for value, let's check out the Sat Cats. We're talking the cats who shat some sats via Boostagrams. Custom messages sent through Podcasting 2.0 apps. Dave Jones from Podcasting 2.0, the podcast, sent a triple threat of 2112 sats each. Referring to the classic Rush album 2112 from 1976. Thank you, Dave. We are fellow Rush fanatics. He says, I remember the first time I sent an email and got a reply from someone famous. I think it was 1993. It was magical. He also says, strange brew reference. A mouse and a beer gets you free beer for life. And Dune was amazing. I'm going back with my son to see it again tomorrow. Masterpiece. These are all references to last week's show, by the way. Go check it out. Dave sent those sats using Fountain and Breeze. Big ups to Dreb Scott. Referring to last week's show as well, he says, I love sound design. So fascinating. Another great show. He sent two sets of sats. One for 27345 and another for 19866 <laughs> Thank you so much, Dreb. Thank you so much, Dave. Value for value means you determine how much value you're getting out of a podcast and you stream it back using a Podcasting 2.0 app from newpodcastapps.com. All these apps are free, by the way. Check out the cool, awesome features like images, chapters, and your ability to stream Satoshis, a.k.a. micropayments, to Podcasting 2.0 shows versus something like Patreon or a monthly subscription service. Like, what if you don't listen to the show? You're still going to get charged the $5, for example, but you get to decide as you listen to the show how much you want to give back to that podcaster. It's a new way to support creators. Musicians will be releasing albums kind of like podcasts, where as you listen, you can stream different amounts to the singer, to the bassist, to the guitarist, or to the whole band. Live streams on YouTube and Twitch and all that stuff, they're totally going to go this way. This is exciting times. Got a lot of responses to our question of the week. Thoughts on Bitcoin. CB Fan 5000 says, it could very well be the future, but it needs to be better regulated first. Only time will tell if it ends up being a legitimate currency. My buddy Tim, TK23Baseball, says, Personally, I am out. I'm one of those, if it ain't broke, don't fix it types. And with all the different cryptocurrencies, I just don't see the point. Brian the Epcot King says, Crypto and NFTs are a scam. Antifa Drugzar says, It's a scam. Bobby Brake says, It's made up money to get the rich even richer without actually having to do anything except trick people into buying it. Bubba Lubber says it's going to destroy the planet. We are teetering on the edge of the point of no return and crypto bros are going, ha ha, I used enough power for the home of a family of five making this token of a crappy JPEG. Big Shot says F crypto. Josh says a scam. Common Rider Raijin says, honestly, it seems like a good idea on paper, but in practice, it's causing some real bad butterfly effects like making graphic cards near cost an automotive down payment. Phoenix Wright says, blockchain is designed to work in a trustless environment. Trust the math, not the person. Done properly, it creates a much more efficient system of facilitating transactions and commerce. Mr. Multiversity says, I think it's dumb. Z Fighters Worldwide, I have yet to figure it out, so I ignore it. Sephiroth Wolf says, pretty much a scam, like the people who sell plots of land on the moon, but without being self-aware enough to call it a novelty joke gift. Mike Combs, I put my money in Chuck E. Cheese coins. It's the same level of fake currency, but at least I have an avenue towards finger cuffs and some gum. Very passionate opinions coming across here. This is great. Leo Matthews, I already have trouble keeping up with one currency. I don't have time for two. Ninja Samurai, NFTs are bad, okay? That is all. Chris Salter, I think about that episode of The Simpsons when Homer is doing online banking at a computer cafe, then Snake comes in and robs him with a floppy disk. The Shonen Flop Podcast. People seem to be taking crypto seriously, but NFT is a scam. Squid Pie the Squid. I'd say it's still too early to decide. It definitely has its uses as well as its problems. Only time can really tell. Michael Jones. It's just one of those things people get rich and with that common man can dabble and probably won't make much of a profit while keeping it at a stable platform for the rich to stay rich. 
I don't think it's going anywhere, but I don't think it will amount to much for regular people. New Pudding DX. Nobody wants them. Team Sora presents, well, now that the IRS is going to start taxing it like it's actually worth what people say it is, everyone's going to bail out. My advice, don't bother. And lastly, Jordan Hamburger. I don't care about the tech. I'm purely in it for the money. It's basically my only hope for ever owning a house, slash not working, etc. All the dream stuff. My thoughts on Bitcoin, I think it's the future of currency. The The whole financial world is, it's, you see the signs. More and more popularity, the tech is advancing. I'm sure ways are going to evolve so that the uh, the climate issue isn't a problem. Again, I think it's the future because of the streaming uh, model on the value for value system with podcasting 2.0. I see that opening up to musicians, any sort of creator where people can stream their shows or their albums or movies, TV shows, whatever, showing content and you streaming what you want back to them in real time as opposed to a subscription model. I think that's the future. New question of the week. Nowadays, do you prefer streaming first-run movies, or are you okay going to the theater? I want to go to the theater. I miss Dune in IMAX. Grrr. You can't replicate that excitement, that, that vibe of everyone laughing together, or dealing with the idiots who keep texting during the show and won't shut up. Let me know your thoughts. Streaming or the theater? Where do you want to see these first-run movies that the studios are putting out nowadays? The HBO Max thing, or Paramount Plus, etc.? Or do you feel totally safe nowadays? Schlep into the theater. At me. At Boombox Pod. And now, Nine Inch Nails Unplugged. You let me violate you. You let me desecrate you. Come on, Cleveland! Yeah, yo, yeah, yo, yeah, yo. Netflix continues its live action adaptations of popular animu. Next up on the docket, One Piece. That series has a thousand episodes, literally. The art style is unique. It's got lots and lots of pirates. Things get crazy, shenanigans and all that stuff. Now, I've been on the dub of One Piece throughout the years as Capone, a mobster captain of the Fire Tank Pirates. And if you're listening to this show on a Podcasting 2.0 app, you can see a pic of him displayed right now. His body's basically a fortress with a pocket dimension inside him that looks like a castle because anime. Meanwhile, One Piece's manga creator, Ichiro Oda, announced the Straw Hat main cast for the Netflix show. Anaki Godoy will be Monkey D. Luffy, Makin Yu as Roronoa Zoro, Emily Rudd as Nami, Jacob Romero Gibson as Usopp, and Taz Skyler is Sanji. I'll be honest, even though I'm in the anime, there's too many episodes to even begin watching, and people keep daring me. It's like, start One Piece. I'm like, no, there's not enough hours in the day, man. But starting from the beginning with like a, a short-term series, even if it's live action, yeah, yeah, I'm intrigued. I'd give it a shot. Now, I haven't seen the recent Cowboy Bebop yet, and the reviews are lukewarm, so my excitement is deflated there. I'm not sure the hyper-stylization that reminds me of a live-action Speed Racer movie is a good translation. If you're curious, Wikipedia summarizes One Piece by saying the story follows the adventures of Monkey D. Luffy, a boy whose body gained the properties of rubber after unintentionally eating a devil fruit. With his crew of pirates named the Straw Hats, Luffy explores the Grand Line in search of the world's ultimate treasure known as One Piece in order to become the next King of the Pirates. The fandom is vast and super passionate and dedicated to the show, so there's got to be something there, right? Now maybe it'll escape the heavy censorship that the anime of One Piece faced in the early days when it was broadcast on children's TV and all those sort of compromises had to be made to get it on TV, like, uh, you know, cigarettes photoshopped into lollipops. Oh. Chris Pratt's time as everyone's favorite everyman's days may be numbered. Because it seems like he's getting cast in every major animated movie. You know, are we getting, like, overexposure here? That happens with certain big celebrities sometimes. It's like, oh, will it stop? Like, how many Bruce Willis direct-to-video movies are going to come out? And he looks tired and bored and it's just a paycheck for him, it's kind of sad. But meanwhile, these big properties continue to be pumped out from Hollywood Studios, so fandom cried foul when Chris Pratt was announced as voicing Mario. Pratt has now been announced to be voicing a new animated iteration of Garfield. A few years ago, it was a paycheck for Bill Murray with two live-action CG 
hybrid flicks. Some Twitter users seem to think that fan casting What We Do in the Shadows, Matt Berry would work. And he's got a great voice. I don't know that Garfield would work as a sophisticated, upper crust sounding Brit. I mean, I get it. Hollywood wants a name. And with Mario, voice actor Charles Martinet, who is beloved, gets unceremoniously cast aside. I don't think that's fair. But, uh, you know, if I think fans are dying to see some sort of big screen adaptation of Mario, they would want the actual Charles Martinet. But who makes more money at the box office? Chris Pratt has a track record. And us voice actors don't. So, yeah, the answer as to who should be voicing Garfield in any version nowadays, come on, I think it's been in plain sight for decades. Comedian Stephen Wright. Yeah! Conspiracy here, and the holidays are a time when families reunite. Hugs, kisses, the same stories over and over, then a big family blowout, and you can't wait to get the hell out of Dodge. But I say, take the high road. If you have conservative family members who don't like profanity, and you're really angry at him, I'm about to drop some knowledge on you. From the Tim Hawkins Handbook, alternative cuss words, field tested, and mother approved. If you're miffed, say shizzle, booger, criminy. If you're exasperated, fiddlesticks, malarkey, shucky darn, and the ever classic, dead gummit. If you want to say I'm not having it, say shut your pie hole, jumpin' Jehoshaphat. Bull Twinkies, Farfignugan, and shut the front door. If your uncle's being the son of a motherless goat, tell him to kiss your horse patootie for the love of Abe Vigoda. You know some shots in movies make that stylistic choice to tilt the camera a bit? Did you know that has a name? I always called it a Batman angle, since there were a lot of tilted shots in the original 60s TV show. Tim Burton used this a lot in his movies, as Joel Schumacher did with his Batman films. The first Thor movie was loaded with them. Many fans kind of bitched about it. Sam Raimi loves using them. The tilted camera shot is called the Dutch angle. Its intention is to make a shot more interesting or to suggest something's amiss, create anxiety or paranoia or disorientation. The bigger the tilt, the more unsettling a shot feels. When you dig deeper, the Dutch didn't even come up with this. It didn't even begin in film. It's the Germans. Back during World War I as part of an arts and literature boom called the Expressionist Movement. The world's depicted in chaos, distorted imagery, dark themes. Filmmakers in Germany were inspired. Silent era classics like The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, Metropolis, and Nosferatu. Continuing on through Orson Welles' epic Citizen Kane, noir crime dramas, Hitchcock thrillers. So why call it Dutch Angle? It's theorized that's just a simple misinterpretation of the term Deutsch, which is, of course, German. And thus endeth the lesson. I still call it a Batman angle. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like it, tell your friends. And always remember, the greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high and falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark, which will always be impossible if you're a stormtrooper. Until next time, I'll see you on the flippity-floppity.